Welcome to Analytics with Nax. This is the end-to-end -end DAX video where I'm going to explain about the basics or fundamentals of DAX and moving on to explaining different business scenarios to use appropriate DAX functions. And why I've taken this topic is because this is the most requested video in this channel and I understand the complexity involved in learning DAX functions. This is because people started learning Power BI and they understand each and every concepts in Power BI. The only place where people stuck in Power BI is DAX, right? So DAX is little tricky. Uh, I agree because while I started learning Power BI, even I face the same thing, same issues that everyone currently or whoever learning uh, Power BI is facing. So how I approach DAX is like I gone through, gone back to understanding about the basics or fundamentals when to use appropriate uh, DAX whether it should be calculated column or whether I need to create a measure and understanding about the appropriate data types that DAX function is accepting so those fundamentals are uh, really help me to write a better DAX functions so this is why I created this video and whatever I'm going to explain as part of this video will definitely make you to help and write a better DAX functions in the future. If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. And do share this channel with your friends and colleagues and so that uh, whatever the work I do will reach as many people as possible. With this note, let us begin. Let's check it out. What are all the topics that we are going to cover in this video? We'll start with the introduction and we will try to understand why we need a DAX like it's used to create measure, calculated column and calculated table. DAX fundamentals is so important because why people are struggling in DAX because they don't understand the fundamentals. So we will focus on the fundamentals like syntax, naming, operators, data types. Then moving on to how DAX works, like filter context and row context. Then we will talk about how calculate function is going to help us in doing all the magics. Then moving on to types of DAX function. So it is also important once you are familiar with fundamentals what are different functions we need to use based on different scenario so we will start with aggregate functions date and time functions time intelligence filter functions relationship followed by logical and text functions once we cover all these types there are a lot of other types but main focus we most of the projects involve we can able to achieve it using this that's why I thought of doing this as our predominant functions as part of this video and finally we will conclude with whatever we have seen today this is the agenda let's begin with our introduction let us begin with introduction about DAX DAX stands for data analysis expression which is a library of functions and operators that can be combined to build formulas and expressions used by Microsoft BI tools basically it contains a collection of functions on top of that you can apply some operators to create formulas or expressions that is why DAX is used for and it is also known as a function language because her whole code is kept inside the function because you will write a lot of functions I mean you will call or use a lot of functions already pre-written by Microsoft the way you write DAX is you choose correct functions that perform certain operation right that is what a DAX is used for so once you notice this word used by Microsoft BI tools so what are those BI tools so once you learn DAX you can use it in uh, Power BI Power Pivot for Excel 
SSIS Tablet Model Azure Analysis Service. So those who have started their career only in Power BI, they may think like DAX is used only in Power BI, but DAX is used uh, a decade before in Excel itself as part of uh, Power Pivot. Power Pivot uh, and SSIS Tabler are the uh, logic behind how Power BI runs at the back end. So once you learn DAX, you can use in all these BI tools. With this introduction, let's move on to what is the purpose of DAX? By using uh, DAX, you can add three types of calculations to your data model. So we have seen what is DAX. It contains a lot of functions and uh, we can apply some operators. So by doing wh wh why we need to use DAX? When we need to go for DAX? Because you create a data model, you bring the tables and drag and drop the visuals right in your uh, Power BI or any model, then you will get the chart then where DAX exactly used in order to create a new calculated columns right you have a, a table with uh, 10 columns you need to create additional column in that in that case you need to use the DAX like first name last name combined together or a sales quantity into discount price how much it was there so like that calculations you want to do then you will need to go for DAX then measures as it indicates it is used to give you the value it will execute at a runtime like sum of sales average of uh, your uh, price all those things will be calculated using measures so these are called measures for this not to create measures you need to go for DAX then finally you will use DAX for creating the calculated tables you have a five to six tables you created star schema using that you are not able to solve your business problem you need to combine or create some derived table or calculated table right using combining the two tables and you create a new table or from a single table you create aggregated table like that you want to create for that also you need to go for DAX so using DAX you either create calculated column measure or calculated tables predominantly there are some other purpose you also you will use DAX like RLS other parts but a uh, 90 percentage of the work involves creating of these items okay then now it's time for us to understand what is the calculated column versus measure so you can see here the calculated column as we discussed in the previous slide itself expands table by creating a new column so when you create a first name I mean combined first name and last name then it will create a new column so it will expand your table when you create a calculated column stored along with the table so if it contains uh, 10 columns and assume there are 1 million rows then for that 1 million rows the new column also will be stored so it consumes the memory it contains less analytical capability so mostly it will be like addition of two columns calculation simple multiplication subtraction those kind of calculations you can do it using a calculated column whereas measure when you will create a measure summarizes a data into single value so it's like uh, numerical value usually measures will be created on top of the numerical value what are numerical values like quantity sales amount your unit price what is your discount price right these are the some of the your numerical quantity for that you will create a measure what it does it summarizes right summarization can be anything it can be some max min average anything right and it will give you a single result it will be calculated at runtime unlike calculated column this will not be stored in the along with the table just a calculations are stored okay only logic then once you drag and drop the measure in your uh, visuals at that time only it will be executed it contains rich analytical capability some of the examples of calculated column so you can see a new product it is a product table where if you combine product item and product category then it becomes a new column similarly you can also create a profit as a new column 
dividing sales amount minus cost amount that will give you a calculated column these are the some of the examples some of the examples of measures you can see total sales sum of it as i said it will summarize it will always wrap around one function like sum of sales amount this is the column name this is not a fully qualified name we will have a table name along with the column name this is just for a demonstration you want to understand so sum of sales amount this is the column name this is a numerical value or column data type then again another example sum of sales amount minus sum of cost amount this is another example of writing the measure so before that uh, the final example as i said one of the future of measure is rich analytical capability as you can see here you can create the previous year sales comparing the current year versus previous year sales for doing that it requires lot of efforts when you are not having a good analytical tool so here this same period last year as you can see it calculates the sum of sales amount same period last year when you see by year 2010 11 12 13 you will get the sales amount in one column when you use this measure in another column right i mean in the table when you are viewing in the table so this will give you for 2011 2010 data previous year sale right so this simple function will have a capability this is what a dax is a function language where all the code kept in the function calculate is one function sum is another function same period last year is another function all these things are functions you are just calling it okay with some reference of your columns then all the logics whatever it is predefined in the by microsoft right they have written a code what calculate should do what sum should do what same period last year will do so all these functions require some arguments for same period last year it required date column for some it requires a numerical column for calculate it requires an expression and then followed by some columns right filters so these are the some of the syntaxes you should aware so i hope uh, this is what a uh, quick introduction about calculated column and measure and in our practical example we will see and demonstrate how uh, these two are different then as uh, we said before dax is used for creating calculated column measure as well as a calculated table when you will go for calculated table for creating a date tables role playing dimension what if analysis so role playing dimension uh, if you are not aware just go and watch my uh, playlist that uh, data warehouse concepts playlist where a single table acting as a different uh, role the best example is uh, date like due date ship date and uh, order date all those things are uh, columns in a fact table these are some of the things you will get to know uh, once we uh, practice uh, DAX but I uh, just you want to understand like what is calculated table it is a derived table you create using a DAX so these are the main purpose you will go for DAX let us start discussing about fundamentals or basics of DAX we'll start with syntax and before that the key difference between Excel and DAX I want to clarify because those who are from uh, Excel background or those who heard in online DAX formulas are similar to the Excel formulas that is what they heard but there are some key difference why because Microsoft Excel you can reference individual cells or arrays okay meaning like you can reference E5 plus F6 like that you can reference individual cells in Excel but in DAX you cannot reference the cells it is either you can reference a table or columns as the DAX function argument okay that is what a main difference and also some of the data types not all the data types supported in Excel are supported by DAX what are the data types supported in DAX that I will cover couple of slides later now let us discuss the syntax the syntax is very simple like this, this is a simple uh, tax formula where total sales is a measure so in this case DAX is used to create a measure so measure 
is what it does it is summing up the sales amount column it aggregates the value sales amount and it will be stored here it is not stored the calculations only the uh, you, you are instructing the power bi or the power bi engine whatever tools behind you are using ssas or analysis service you are saying calculate sum of the sales amount this is what you are instructing and the syntax is sum of is a function and fact sales is the table name so table name contains the space so you uh, put it within the quotes single quotes then a column name is wrapped within the brackets the entire code the uh, the column reference right it is within the parenthesis of this sum function so sum is the function you are putting just argument as the column name the sales amount is the column name this is the simple syntax for your dax function so we need to understand the naming in order to better write the dax codes basically you can see the table name without space you can write it like this sales and if it contains uh, some space you can write within the single quotes and you people say like fully qualified name meaning like uh, the column reference you are doing you need to reference a table name along with the your column name within the brackets so it's a column name or measure name both are similar you can see over here and if it contains space as you see the table name is within the uh, single quotes and you mention the quantity that is the column name operators those who are from the programming background uh, they may aware what is the main purpose of operators all about you want to do some calculations addition subtraction or any other uh, um, arithmetic operation or comparison right you need to go for these kind of operators so these are the different operators supported in dax arithmetic operators comparison operators text concatenation so the people will confuse with ampersand and 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 so ampersand here indicates concatenation and in order to verify logical condition you need to do uh, two comparison right then you need to quote double and and if it's for logical or condition two uh, lines over here right how it's shown i hope uh, this is uh, more or less uh, so basics let's move on to data types so data types are uh, building blocks like uh, it's very fundamental for any programming so similarly dax supports following data types text whole number or decimal for numerical values and date time date and time true or false boolean so very limited uh, data type sets not uh, so much okay so you can see uh, for uh, numerical values whole number or decimal and for uh, text uh, it's a free text or general you can say it's a text for date and time related thing there are three things either date time or separately date and time for boolean you have true and false so these are the data types supported in dax we have seen the introduction and fundamentals of dax and it's the time for us to understand it in the real world how we will use dax in power bi or any other tool throughout this demo i'm going to use the adventureworks uh, database and if you don't know how to do it there is a video i have made uh, long back just go and check it out that will be in the sql server playlist how to upload adventureworks so you should have a sql server adventureworks database and then you can connect to power bi to practice along with me as part of the demo so this is what i'm saying so this is my server i have adventureworks data arrows i have downloaded from internet and i have restored it in my server and this is my power bi which doesn't contain anything it is a empty power bi file i just launched and keeping it for you now let's try to connect to this uh, data source that is my data source resides in sql server so i'm connecting it it is dot slash my server name that is naga sql 2019 and i can 
just click on connect so that uh, it will uh, use my credential i think it is not naga's girl it is in caps that's fine let's see what it happens use my current credentials we are unable to connect to data source using to access this is so encrypted click ok it's saying uh, some a a encryption that is fine <coughs> now this is my data uh, it's residing here and you can see what are the tables I need as usual I will go for fact internet sales and I can use the select related table so that fact and dimension are created relationship in the database it will fetch it up and in this I do not want to fact internet sales and I have other dimensions connected here so I am going to load all these tables these things uh, if you are already familiar with power bi and it will be more familiar with you and the intention of this video is not uh, you to teach you power bi main focus is on dax so let us not worry about uh, whatever data it is or whatever source it can be okay so now you can see <coughs> in uh, here where you have uh, your fact table surrounded by your dimension tables and uh, why I am showing this window for writing DAX you need to understand what kind of relationship exists between the tables you see the customer and uh, fact is one to many and whereas the dim date one of the column like due date is connected as uh, active and other columns are inactive we will come to this later but for your understanding it is called a role playing dimension where a single date table is connected to fact table multiple times these things we will come to that later now first things first we have loaded the data here now what we want to do we already seen the main purpose of DAX is to create a column measure and a table we'll start with the column let's go and check it out the dim product now so this is the data that exists for the dim product where you can see you have a product alternate key and the English product name what I want now is like I want this product alternate key and the product name to be combined okay so for that you can click on this uh, table and new column right you can choose the like this or in you have uh, options to add the columns over here as well so as soon as you do that you see a column appear it is what the DAX code you are going to write so here you will say new product name or product name new whatever it can be okay just I will place it like this here you are going to combine the columns right so it is full reference right uh, as I said before it is uh, you are referencing uh, the table name and within bracket you have a column name it is a fully qualified name so product alternate key is the one you want to uh, has a first argument and then you use ambassador symbol as already we seen ambassador symbol is a concatenator here so it will concatenate in between I want to add some symbol here okay hyphen so for that I use the double quotes again I will use the ambassador symbol then what is the name that is English product name so I will type English product name I just type E and G you can see the intelligence displays all the values matching okay that is uh, that displays all the columns that starts with R that contains E and G now this is what the code is once you plus enter you can see here the alternate key right uh, I will try to move this one I am not sure whether I can move uh, towards left that is fine so now you can see uh, this two columns right the product alternate key and English product name that as combined and created as a new column so this is one typical simple example of creating your um, calculated column there are lots and lots on the examples like you can create uh, first two characters left off to to create uh, some subcodes right 
so those kind of things you can have it the main thing you was analyzing here is like what you need to understand is like the calculated column preserves memory you see for each row of this table there is one entry made here okay this preserves memory that is the one point you need to highlight this is what a calculated column is let us start discussing about a measure so measure when you see here in uh, power bi the columns that doesn't have as a sigmoid symbol which is nothing but it can be a text column or um, it is a reference to another table and whatever you see as a sigmoid symbol which is nothing but your measures typically power bi it it may be considered as a internal measures and sometimes if it is some numerical values it will be designed as a i mean it will consider as a measure like zip date key it doesn't uh, it is not actually the measure okay so in those cases you go and uh, change the aggregation for this okay definitely this is no more going to be the uh, aggregation okay don't summarize these columns is not required as well so this is the first point i want to make and you can see here we will focus on two things one is order quantity and sales amount okay let us try to have a new visual for sales amount and i will do it as a label data label so you have order quantity and sales amount and we will try to increase the category label as well so that uh, it will be visible to everyone and i will do the format by tab and i will choose uh, background color slightly so these two are considered as measures and you can able to see it and often we can also write a measure like this like total sales sum of sales amount okay that is uh, what is that sales amount now i have written this measure okay now let us try to have this measure against over here and i will do the same formatting for it so what is the difference between this as well as this writing this right there is no technical difference this sum of uh, fact internal sales that explicitly i created and this one okay this is pointing to the base column the sales amount does the same thing there is no performance impact or nothing the only advantage is like assuming everywhere okay in your report there are uh, uh, 10 to 20 reports and uh, in the same uh, report i mean uh, is different pages and everywhere you refer this sales amount suddenly what happened uh, the column name got changed or it got collapsed so all this and um, maybe instead of sales amount they put sales underscore amount so what happened at that time all the 100 places you need to manually change it but when you write it like this right what happens you are not going to have any impact sum of fact internal sales sales amount right here you instead of sales this particular total sales is referred 100 places so instead of changing 100 places you just come over here and change the newly changed column here that's it so all other 100 place will be automatically fills that is the only main advantage of writing so to come back to our main topic what is the measure when to create it so these are one of the main reason you need to create explicit pressure even though i say whatever sig uh, sigma symbol aggregation symbol exists is a measure right and another difference as i said before when you go to the product here all your newly created column contains each row has been stored in the memory whereas in fact internet sales the column that i created here it's not a column a measure the total sales will not appear as part of your table right it is not 
part of your table the data is not stored anywhere if you write this code this data not stored only if you drag and drop okay when you drag and drop in this table like over here and you want to analyze against some group at this time only this query will be fired and you will get the results okay so this is what the key difference about your um, columns and and the measure so it is not uh, when people uh, at the beginning stage they will ask me so always it is better to write a measure it is not the case most of the aggregation type and um, calculations you will go for measures but these kind of concatenation as we did before some column derivation right these things you need to go for new calculated column okay so both have a difference and for that you need to choose the respective one but you need to understand this measure is executed only when you use it in a visual when you remove it it is not stored anywhere and only if you use this visual here i mean the measure here at this time only this calculation is executed against each row here okay the filter context will work i will come to that later what is filter context and row context so with this we will stop about um, calculated column and measure for introduction purpose and we will go to next topic calculated table so one such example for creating a calculated table um, maybe uh, most of them I, I have explained separate video in modeling of our handling role playing dimension here you can see here now the data is uh, related okay now related using the due date it is not actually a due date it should be mostly uh, order date should be the cre factor deriving it but what happens when i want to analyze by using the i want to filter okay filter the data by due date so now this is related using the order date okay order date and the based on that order date i have connected the dim date now when you filter it then you can uh, whatever you filter that will filter the order date corresponding order date column but i want to filter by based on the due date okay for that sometimes uh, the role playing dimension is the perfect solution but for uh, due to some reasons we may want to create some duplicate table okay for that how you can create so let us go to um, your home okay the table tools and then you can go to new table here so one way to create a table is like for i'm going to create a dim date table here dim date underscore due due date for due date i'm creating a dim date table i can just type date table as such this is one way of creating like um, just when you put enter okay this will create me the entire table copy copy of uh, one table here that's it so once you go and check over here dim date due date it's nothing but dim date is repeated as such over here this is one way of creating otherwise i have another way for i'm creating a, a new table in another method okay just go to uh, uh, tables and new table let us try to create another table for ship date ship date okay or dim date underscore ship date so here i can write a code as well how you can write date of okay i can say um, like or i can use the calendar you can see like calendar start date and end date when you give this uh, calendar start date and end date it will create a column you can see returns a table with one column of all dates between start date and end date that is what i want okay here i need to use the date function um, let's try to create uh, two years uh, data it contains more than um, for demonstration purpose i'm creating um, let's try to make it like uh, 2020 one one okay 
this is the date that start date parameter I'm giving press comma for this comma uh, we have given the start date similarly end date you need to press 2021 12 31 two years I'm simulating okay I'm giving this entry once you press enter you can see a table is created ship date you just go and check it out here so one column is created and again you can derive it one by one so you can create a new column here year of uh, this particular uh, date field so you can put year okay then you can pass the, the left hand side is the uh, column name and here you will mention the parameter date so year of date which will give you the name so this is nothing but uh, hold on here uh, name what happened you need to uh, provide the full name okay it, uh, you have multiple date column it get confused so we are creating for ship date let's try to create it for it this is what uh, you can say fully qualified name again you can press the uh, another function and the uh, your column name so this left hand side is your column name and this is the function that is passed I mean it gets this column as a reference I mean the parameter then gives the corresponding year value here that is what it is here you can rename it like name okay for your understanding year underscore name to understand uh, the difference between the name column so you see whatever you give that will appear here so this is how you can create the derived column there are some functions that creates your table okay like uh, one I showed here this calendar will create and you can copy another table using just referring that another table or you can use the summarize column functions different table returning functions will be used to create the tables so these are the main three reasons you will use DAX either creating calculated column or creating a measure or using the calculated table and one important fundamentals uh, we need to consider is the data types so basically like uh, DAX functions are more are uh, connected to data types like you have aggregation functions that requires only the numerical data types that column I mean it gets the column reference that is of uh, numerical data type so some text uh, functions like uh, concatenate all those things will require text data types so data types plays a major role to demonstrate I will go with one of the example right so now let us see we have uh, some numerical data types in this product like days to manufacture and we have uh, English name and French name you can see the data type of it this particular column like we will say that English product name the data type is text and you can see like what are the different data types it can hold you cannot change the text to whole number that will create a confusion even you can see that sigmoid symbol if it is sigmoid symbol then it is like uh, either it can be a whole number or a decimal number so that it can be aggregated this indicates some aggregations can be applied on top of it so this is what a uh, very important thing to note and you can see something with uh, this symbol like date time or date will have uh, denoted differently so date time means you can see the different data types so the what is the main point I'm trying to convey here so what is the main use of data types now let us see I will create a new measure for the sum of English product name and what will happen let's try to create um, sum of product name okay so you are trying to use this sum function okay you can see the column name in in doesn't say odd adds all numbers in a column okay it adds all the numbers in a column but what I'm trying to do I will put English product name here okay so dim product of English product name what will happen so some product name now you can see a new measure created here that is some product name 
what will happen there is no error while creating but as soon as i drag and drop this measure here okay it throws me some error what it throws calculation error in measure dim product sum product name the function sum cannot work with values of type string so here only gives you the actual error message so a sum cannot take a column with text data type right so what is the text data type you can go and see here the dim product where the product name english product name contains only the textual columns right so it will not sum it up so the same measure okay i will go here and f have some other numerical data type here like list price sum of list price okay this is just for demonstration to understand okay the way you will not create some measures in the uh, product dimension just for understanding i'm demonstrating it so instead of english product name i am using the numerical value here list price okay and let us try to hit enter so as soon as you enter you can see there is a data over here so this will sum up all the list price of across the all products so this is what you need to understand so for each function it takes certain columns and that columns should be of particular data type like string functions will work only with string data type columns the numerical functions uh, the aggregation function will work only with your a uh, numerical data type like uh, integer the whole number or decimal okay that one lead will take that is what i want to ensure even you you see like you are adding some date data types date add of date difference and parallel period previous period so all those things takes only the date data type so you need to specify only the date columns in those functions so that is why your data types of the columns are so important and you need to ensure you are passing the correct column with the proper data type to that function with this note we will move on to our next session let us start understanding about row context versus filter context in dax which is very important concept to have a deep knowledge on dax so let's begin with row context a row context does calculation for each row with the values within that row meaning like you are doing some calculations for each row in your table that becomes your row context example is over here like sum x sales sales amount minus cost amount what it does is like for each row it will do this calculation right the sales amount is one column cost amount is another column for each row it will do the um this calculation and give you the result this is what a row context is as simple as that whereas the filter context is set of filters that applied before the table arrives for use okay what it mean you have written this formula like total sales sum of sales amount okay sales is a fact table sales amount is a column sum is a function then applying filters from filter pane visuals slices okay example from filter pane you apply 2017 and uh, in from any other visual you applied country as india and slices you applied uh, city chennai so after applying all these filters okay this table will be filtered sales say for example uh, without any filter it contains 1 million rows for this combination only 0.5 million rows are there for that 0.5 million you do this calculation okay then it becomes your work done the filter context this is what the filter context is all about you apply all the filters get the uh, small table or filtered table then do the calculation that is what a filter context is all about let us see that in a practical examples now we have seen the definition of row context and filter context let us try to check it out in power bi to understand it much better we are in power bi now and this is very simple uh, table you can see the table visual which we are viewing the data against sales data group total sales 
Let us try to add some more filters here to understand much better about filter context first. Then we will move on to row context. Now let me have this um, English occupation and let me put it here in um, the filter pane. I will change it to filter and slightly increase the size of this filter data as well. And also increase the header size. Okay. Now this is the total sales. Now this is giving me the total sales of the entire table. You can see the fact internet sales total sales that is 29 million, right? And the same total sales I've used in this table, but it is showing me the different results, how it works. This is what a filter context is. So basically in this case, the total sales is split by territory group Europe. This is one filter. This is filter number one. And as soon as I click on this clerical, this also re reduce the data, right? You can see the for clerical it is 3100632. So meaning like a filter context is nothing but set of filters, filter one, and this is filter two, which is applied to arrive to the result. That is what a filter context is. So it is not only this particular uh, Europe is uh, deriving this result, also other filters, right? This is filter number one, this is filter number two. Then you also apply some other filters over here against uh, each year or particular country you want to apply or any other product color you want to apply all these filters are applied to derive this value right that is what a filter context is so it is as simple as that and each filter in dax world is considered as a one filter table okay and all this table filter table combined together forms a filter context basically to rephrase like this is the total record 60,398 and when you sum up the sales amount here right this sales amount which will give you the uh, 29 million whereas when you click on this clerical as well as for Europe how it derives for clerical I mean to say the filter propagates from here this is why the relationship is important here the clerical or the occupation remains in this table right the dim customer over here the um, english occupation in this customer how this flows to fact internet sales that is what you create a relationship and you see the filter propagates from dim customer to fact internet sales the uh, the propagation from here to here right so this is one filter and this once you click on one filter like English occupation that is considered as one filter then again sales territory that remains in another dimension where is that here so tails sales territory group that is also applied as another filter so you will have two filters now filter one is uh, your um, dim customer English uh, occup uh, occupation and then filter 2 is your sales territory group so these two filters combined called as filter context so and in this filter context right Europe is the value for uh, Europe you will have this is the sales amount for North America this is the your uh, for the filter context changes here because the value is North America for North America clerical this is the value so like this you need to compute so it is nothing but set of filters applied to derive the filter table from that you will get the corresponding results so this is what a filter context is and what about the row context so row context as the definition says the calculations is applied for each and every row 
that's it so you can see the definition here does the calculation for each row with the values within that row so basically like uh, you can write one simple measure to understand so I will have new sum x here I will write the profit okay profit is the new measure I'm creating like over here I will write sum x and I will need to refer the uh, table fact internet sales and I'm going to apply sales amount minus product cost fact internet sales total product cost maybe so what it does for each row in this fact internet sales this calculation is happened I mean this calculations will be calculated so that is what a row context is so let me put enter and I will use the profit over here in the same table and you can see for each territory group you calculated the profit so how it works here is like you can have this fact internet sales and for each row the calculation the particular uh, sales amount minus your product cost should calculate it for each row because for you can see like the product cost for one particular row item is different for another product so you cannot have the total sum of sales minus total product cost right you cannot get the profit you need to do certain calculations each row because the product a cost is 50 and you are selling it for 60 and another product b cost is 70 you're selling it for 80 so you need to subtract these two records then you calculate a profit for each row you cannot sum up uh, all the sales amount and all the product cost and you cannot subtract total sales minus product cost for these calc type of calculations you go and apply the row by row calculations okay so this is what a row context is and you can see this calculation the profit calculation happens using the sum x the sum x is the iterator that will loop through each row in this table and from each row once you specify you can specify the column names directly otherwise for all other calculation you have seen sum of column name right here once you have a table level information you can specify the column reference directly there is no need to put wrap it around some or average functions okay so once you refer a table you can refer a column so you are referring uh, two columns sales amount minus product cost now you may ask me once I apply this clerical whether this fact internet sales will be filtered or not yes so basically once you apply filters external filters here this table will be filtered then this calculations will be happening that is why it will be faster so you will uh, you are doing this calculation for the filter context so first filter context applied and this table is reduced to clerical only then you will get the calculations done for each row so let us try to check it out once you click on clerical the profit also calculated only for clerical with the filter context applied so this is what your row context and filter context is next we will move on to our calculate function let's start understanding a calculate DAX function which is very important function in DAX and let us try to deep dive into it so basically the calculate function evaluates expression in a context modified by filters this is the simple definition of calculate function we will try to understand with some simple examples here demonstrated and we will move on to our power bi and understand it much better now as the definition says evaluates an expression so what is that expression this calculate takes an expression this is your expression that is sum of sales amount in a context modified by filters so basically like um, as I said before 
this is the filters modifiers you are modifying the filters whatever applied say for example in the country you applied some filters right say for example europe or you some other country australia that will ignore whatever filters applied and this will calculate only for the united states irrespective of whatever filters you applied in your page or external slices that will be ignored and it does the calculation similarly over another example do, does the evaluate an expression so calculate evaluate sum of sales amount for all the dim country in that column right it consider all the values in this country column so whatever the filter context applying ignore those calculate all the values in this dim territory country so let us try to understand it much better if you didn't get it in this explanation let's move on to power bi so we have a similar our uh, same table here and um, let us try to have a country here instead of uh, our uh, territory group so that it will be much clearer to you so we have a country over here australia canada france germany united kingdom united states so let me remove the profit we will focus only on total sales now what i'm trying to say here is like i want to calculate the united states figure and i want to compare it across other countries right so how much percentage difference between australia and uh, france against the united states so for in order to do that for each country i need to get the united states here right so such a comparison can be done only if you use this calculate function so let us uh, try to write the get the united states sales first against each uh, country then we will try to calculate so first is like new measure then instead of just writing the sum of sales amount we will say us sales this is the measure name we will provide over here that is us sales and then we will have a calculate function so you see the intelligence automatically uh, popped out here let me zoom in so that you will understand it better calculate then i will write the sum of sales amount that is over here um, let me start writing sales amount so that it will appear then here is the catch where you are going to write the united states sales so where is that that is sales territory country equals united states so start writing it it should be um, there is no uh, i mean it is more case sense too so if you write wrongly it will not give you the correct result if you miss uh, place the spelling as well so i hope this bracket is not required so dim sales territory country equals united states so once you press enter then you can go and uh, click on this visual over here there you go now you can see here this 9389790 is repeated for all other countries as well so this is what i said it modify the filter context so what is the filter context of this particular cell well, let's say like clerical so even if you press this one okay so what is the filter context here clerical as well as australia then this is the result in case of this particular measure that is us sales this is applied this filter context is applied whereas the australia filter context is modified because you are saying whatever filter is present in this column that is filter context ignore that but you consider it as united states so australia is no more 
is applied here and you are saying for if in this column you consider the United States so it is like modified filter context so you are modifying the filters here so this is what the United States sales and it will ignore whatever filters applied here so all for all this um, values it is repeated so wh why you need to have such values you want to do a comparison between the australia sales and the us sales what is the difference between these two so in those cases you need to apply such a measure and then you can apply difference in sales percentage or whatever right let us try to have it make, make it simple we want difference between total sales of uh, us minus australia so how you can do it let's try to write the new measure which says difference in sales different sales difference in sales whatever it is us sales i'm saying this measure that is what that is what it is what it is what you need total sales now you can see both then you can have this uh, different sales measure over here in this table and you can see the results over here so uh, i hope uh, you understand what i'm trying to make here like uh, let us try to have uh, two decimal places not to have uh, uh, more so it will avoid a confusion so now you can see a proper uh, difference between uh, these two like us for each uh, country you are getting the difference how much difference compared to united states so such a difference you can make only if you are uh, making the code like this right so that is what uh, the main purpose of this calculate function let us try to have uh, another example here like uh, instead of um, your um, u.s states comparison i want how much percentage contribution each country has made against this total right so for that how you can write so let us try to have a copy of uh, this measure and i will say all country sales okay let's have like a new measure so the how you can get the uh, cont contribution or proportions or percentage uh, contributions like for each uh, row here the each country you need to get this value here then you use the divide function of uh, your total sales divided by your uh, australia sales then you will get the results right same thing we are going to do for first step is to get the all country sales so here again you are modifying the uh, filter context so here i am not going for your sales calculate sales amount instead of united states i am saying like all country sales so for that you include all so you are modifying the filter context here if there is any filters applied in this country ignore that take consider all the values last time we consider only the us values this time you consider all the country values that is what all function is does so these are some of the functions you use okay that modifies the filter context so now once you press enter now we will have uh, all country sales here now once you have this you can keep it here now you can see six four six eight four seven eight four okay that is repeating for all the countries so ignore about uh, this na values we will talk about that later but for now you can see this is applied this total value is repeated for all the countries now how you can do the uh, percentage difference you can either create a new measure or with the existing measure you can do it if you want to do a comparison like this then you create a new measure like um, percentage contribution of each country percentage contribution 
okay i'm just writing a short form okay that's fine i completed percentage contribution is nothing but um, your total sales okay divided by all country sales then use the percentage format okay there you go so the australia contribution is 16 percentage and the france contribution is 20 percentage and you can see germany contribution is 22 percentage so you can see how much contribution that each country has made so this is how why you want to do the transit i mean uh, the context um, i mean modify the filter context right why you want to use the calculate and why you want to uh, transition the filter context because sometimes you want to do certain calculations that requires overriding your filter context the filter context should not be applied in those cases you will go for calculate that basically the definition says modify the filter context so you are modifying the filter context whatever we have seen before like row context and filter context which will apply external filters along with the internal filters in the chart then it will give you the result here this works as a filter context but in this case you are not you are modifying the filter context you are getting the total value here not this filter is not applied for this right you get the all the values and showed here then you divide it the using this calculation so this is what a calculate function does it accepts the external function external filters because you are not used uh, the columns over here english occupation you are using only the calculations for the country you are modifying only the filter context for the country so other filters still is valid okay that you need to understand it I hope uh, this is fair enough to understand when you need to use the calculate function and this is very important once you understand it you can able to write any complex logics that should be used by calculate function now we have seen like uh, DAX is used to create uh, calculated column measures and calculated tables and we have to understand what are different types of DAX functions available it's grouped under some types right something like aggregation or time and some financial functions so what are different types available let us try to check it out in this session so different types of DAX functions like aggregation function as we are already familiar with uh, some minimum maximum average all those things are uh, primarily most of them will use and date and time functions i will just quickly go through that what are those functions time intelligence functions more powerful like ytd mtd total ytd and then uh, other uh, time intelligence functions filter functions financial functions information logical functions okay so these are different types of dax functions available and uh, some other things mostly not used in all the uh, subject areas maths and trigonometric functions parent and child function relationships are uh, used when you have i mean it's like uh, the aggregate function date dimensional functions are uh, by default most are 90 percentage of the projects will use the whatever you see in this top four other functions are used as and when is required like uh, relationship table ma table manipulations text functions right if your data is more on to text you are focus on text it's not uh, all the projects will have uh, textual data right so these are some of the DAX function types now the point is like uh, you will have around 250 DAX functions fall under these categories so do I need to understand all those things right that is the question 
so you can go through this uh, reference over here okay this is the where I referred uh, these types of function and to answer my question like whether I need to know all these 250 functions the answer is no no one knows all these uh, functions because uh, there is no way like uh, everyone in their projects in the real time they will implement those functions right only the situation comes they will go and create it so th that is what I want to make so but in saying that do I need to know some basic a predominant or primary functions so that I can able to handle some projects right the answer is here the most used DAX functions what are those aggregation function like sum x average x min min x max max a count distinct count then followed by a filter function you have a calculate filter all all except so you can take a screenshot of this so once you are familiar with these functions you can able to handle most of the projects so this is first list of uh, functions and other things comes with the for time intelligence and date time like total ytd total qtd and the first date last date year month day so once you are familiar with uh, these functions like related relationship is blank has one value summarize group as treat as rank x so these are my favorites most of the projects are used i definitely say there are other functions also i used uh, in my project but those are not predominantly used whatever you see in this list the most used functions in my day-to-day -day projects now we already have all these types of um, functions exist in DAX but it is practically impossible in a single video to combine all the DAX functions which will definitely confuse you and it is not uh, recommended as well so what the plan is like in next part of the sessions what we are going to see is like all the functions highlighted in red right aggregation date and time time intelligence filter logical functions relationship functions and text functions we're going to cover these topics and in these we will touch upon some of the functions in each category that will clarify you or give you an idea how you can use different functions based on the different business scenarios with this understanding you can able to uh, answer or handle any of your business scenarios with this note let us try to start with aggregation functions so what are aggregation functions like basically you have a transactional data and you want to see the data in the aggregated manner like right? so what are those you have a sum and count average max min and distinct count so these are the different aggregation functions available apart from these five which are highlighted in red you also have other aggregation functions which are rarely used and some cases most of them will use count rows or count blank as well so <coughs> when you are from SQL background you might be familiar with these uh, things it's a typical uh, group by of um, your uh, calculations or table data and you need to use some aggregation along with that so the sum count average max minimum which is uh, easy to understand but in case of DAX you also have something like sum x count a or count a x so what are this a and a x version or x version of it that it also I will try to cover as part of this video let's start with understanding this aggregation functions so basically like um, what is this uh, reporting everything is all about is like you want to see the data at the higher level or aggregated level right so you have your fact internet sales over here that where you can see there are 60,000 records so seeing the records one by one doesn't give you any um, statistics or analysis right so 
what you need to do you need to model in such a way that and you need to derive or generate a report at the higher level each country wise what is my sales and each occupation which occupation is uh, contributing more some kind of aggregations right that is what you will do so what are the aggregation functions available right so let us try to start with the basic measure <coughs> we can say this as the inbuilt measure where you can see here sales amount that is implicit measure right so when you drag and drop here it is a column by default when it is aggregated it is not showing one by one as soon as uh, if you see here this is the textual column customer PO number whereas when I drag and drop this one it will not aggregate anything it will show first off okay it is not doing the any aggregation whereas whichever the numerical column it will do the aggregation so where is the aggregate how it is calculated as sum you can see here the by default it is aggregated as sum so these are the basic aggregation by default a measure is attached to one aggregation you can see all the numerical column or you can change this behavior okay for the sales amount you can change this behavior instead of some I want to do the average of sales amount or average of count right so those kind of stuffs you can change it over here so this sales amount as having aggregation is sum so this is what it is set now in case of order quantity it is calculated as sum again because order quantity can be two or three quantities for each product so it also to be the sum so this is the aggregations the basic aggregations you have over here you might ask me like by default the implicit measures are calculating the sum what is the point of writing the explicit measures like this you can see here this is again doing the same the total sales is the measure name which is doing the same operation what we have seen here we are using the implicit measure like over here what we are doing sum of fact internet sales sales amount this is called explicit measure where we are writing the user is writing this calculation the now I use this explicit measure here which is again showing the same results okay the core difference or the from the developer perspective what is the advantage you will get is the performance perspective there is no difference it is more or less uh, same because you are using implicit measure or explicit measure with, without any calculated uh, function wrapped around it the performance remains same but when it comes to the developer perspective assume you use the implicit measure the direct columns all over your calculations everywhere uh, around uh, you have like um, around 10 to 20 reports right I mean 10 to 12 pages in this report then if this column name is changed in your source system or something has happened then your all your 20 pages or whatever reports wherever you are refer this one it will be failing it will not reflect whereas if you use explicit measure once you fix this measure right instead of sales amount the in source system they change sales underscore amount once you change fix this explicit measure wherever this explicit measure is referred everything will be automatically will be reflecting so from the developer perspective this is super performant and efficient to fix it in a single place so that is why always I recommend you to create some explicit measure even for a simple measure like this and then you can hide this measure this is what my recommendation so so now I told you like um, this is implicit measure where I drag and drop the base column and also I can use the explicit measure this is very clear so let us let me walk you through the base measures by using implicit measures itself so this is average so which saying about 
average sales in australia this is across over all the years when you click on 2013 this is the average sales in australia so this is out about average sales then you can also have a minimum sales that is in australia the minimum sales happened is two we can click on different year so that we can see uh, any changes happen i hope uh, it will change for maximum so when you change to maximum of your uh, aggregation of sales amount you can see 3578 across uh, all the countries it's same but when you click on different year the value changes accordingly so the data is like that so that is why uh you can see the same maximum amount for all the countries but when you click on different years you can see the difference in 2014 is the last data available so that is why you have uh, uh the maximum sales amount is 159 whereas in 2013 2443 is the maximum sales amount so when you click on a particular quarter or uh, i think the data is duplicated uh repeatedly Th that is why you can see the same uh, number repeated but when you see for 2014 the actual maximum sales amount for australia is 159 so this is the basic aggregation type you can change between here either you can use from the if you use implicit measure you can change here some average minimum maximum or count right count of uh, total records and especially the count is used uh, uh, based on the invoice number so basically this is for you can set the sum of sales amount here and how many records has happened right for that you can use the sales order number and here also you can see this is set as sum so this can be changed it over here so this is another important factor like this aggregation when you set here when you remove it okay click on it and set it here this will be applicable for all the visuals when you drag and drop here you see this aggregation by default it will be count but there is a provision to change for you as well okay so this is the another point i want to highlight now this order number meaning like there are 332 total records in australia that is what happened in 2014 when you uncheck it so there are 13000 records in australia this is the total sales amount that is how you can control the aggregations so these are the basic um um aggregation some average minimum maximum count and i will talk about uh, co distinct count as well like um usually distinct count will be counted like how many products sold so for that you can drag and drop this product uh key okay this is related that is why you do not have any uh, symbol here so just you can use the count distinct so count distinct when you put here there are 158 distinct products sold in australia when you click on 2013 it will be filtered to 2013 in 2013 there are one or two distinct products sold and there are 11000 transactions and this is your total sales amount that is how you can see the results so as i said before you can either create the implicit measures like that or explicit measures this is the core aggregation part in upcoming part of the video we will try to understand some x and max max x so that max a also so that you will understand when you need to use the core measures and when you need to go for x or a version of the core measures now let's try to understand this uh, x version of uh, sum when to use it so basically like uh, you have this sales amount let me uh, remove other things okay and you have uh, sales territory country wise total sales over here and in order to calculate the profit right let me have a profit that we have already written we need to use the sumx <coughs> why so profit in this business it is total sales amount minus total product cost profit is like for each an individual item you need to calculate the profit because sometimes for each transaction that might be discount might be uh, applicable because 
<coughs> the profit calculation why you cannot sum up the total sales you cannot sum up the product standard cost because for each product product cost is different for each transaction how much profit you have got that you need to calculate that is you need to calculate the profit row by row then you need to sum up the profit that is what I am trying to convey so th for these kind of operations only you need to use the profit over here this sumx function will go to this table and then subtract the sales amount minus the product cost for each row so this x function is nothing but you are iterated to the table it will go to this table whatever the expression table it can be a filtered table as well so go to this table filter table then do this calculation then whatever calculations you do here that will be summed up so here for each row it will subtract the sales amount minus product standard cost and calculate your profit right then sum up this column let us try to understand uh, the max max a and max x and we will move on to other types of functions so first max so let me create a measure here new measure so max has the uh, formula indicates it gives the maximum amount from that column so let me put that sales amount here so fact internet sales sales amount and you can see the definition returns the largest numerical value or string in a column okay basically it takes a column and it ignores the logical values meaning like if it is a boolean data type it will not be considered that is the code difference i have demonstrated um, this max in a separate video in the DAX playlist just go and watch it so now I'm use this max now you can see I can use this maximum sales here so which indicates for each color what is the maximum sales amount this is what it is when you say the definition of a function let me take this one the definition is remains same largest value in a column does not ignore logical values and text it will include the logical values so if it is it max a is used when you want to have a maximum from the logical values that is the boolean expression then in that case you can need to go for max a i do not have any logical values now so i'm ignoring that let's move on to understanding the max x right when we can use it so here you have a maximum sales max s is, is the iterator as you can see from the definition returns the logical numerical value a largest string that results from evaluating expression for each row of a table so here you can have a filtered table then you can get the maximum value so typically like uh, when i use um, fact internet sales and then comma when I have um, your um, what you call um, the sales amount okay the sales amount fact internet sales amount I can use this one so what is the code difference you can see here is like maximum sales so again the result remains same there is no difference right so when you use max and max x of uh, the actual formula the result will be same because of the filter context applied there are also filter context applied then you will get the results max x is used when you want to do some filtering over here right so as you can see assume i want the maximum sales here i will just copy this visual okay and i will revert back this one as max and leave it for max okay let it be max sales i'm going to create max x sales measure new measure so here i will paste it max x sales okay here what i'm going to do i want to do a filter of this fact so filter this 
sales okay i want whichever sales amount is having more than 1000 okay here you see 49 is the maximum amount of your multicolor right here what i am saying i am saying sales amount should be greater than 1000 then only whatever having the i mean whichever records having sales amount greater than 1000 okay get those maximum records okay i mean from that above 1000 whichever is having uh, the maximum value show me those values that is what i'm saying say for example you have 500 records out of which 200 records having greater than 1000 sales right so from remaining uh, 300 so like i'm confusing i will repeat again say for example you have 500 records out of which 200 records having 1000 greater than sales right 1000 sales then get those records from that records get me whichever is maximum value i don't want anything less than 1000 as a maximum okay now when you enter it now you can see here i use this one you can see the beauty here like i ignored whichever is not having thousand because the table itself filtered for those sales amount greater than thousand in that case in multi the maximum sales amount earlier okay without any filtration it is 49 is the maximum but why there is no records because in this calculation you will get only the records having only thousand greater than sales okay so you ignore that so such a calculations you can go for max x so row by row operation you ignore that base records itself right core uh, the fundamental or the after evaluating the filter context then you do the calculations right so this applicables whenever you click on any uh, year you see based on the different year it will work properly so <clears throat> this is what it is so now you got the point about uh, the core um, functions about sum count or max average min these are the core fundamental functions as and when required based on the different uh, business scenario you need to go for some max or max x or based on the a or um, if it is mostly related to text or something like logical values then you need to go for a functions which is meant for the string or logical handling i hope this is clear about uh, aggregation functions i have a separate playlist for uh, dax you can go through all these functions once again let's start discussing about uh, date and time functions as you can see on your left hand side most of the date related functions and here you have a time related functions basically like and weekday and week number also usually uh, date related but what i'm trying to say is like these are commonly used uh, mostly the granularity of the data will be at the date level some rare cases some business requires only the time related calculations that is what it is let's start discussing about the date related function we already seen a calendar and calendar auto while creating the table so these two functions used to create a table as uh, we already know dax used to so three purpose to create measure to create a calculated column or calculated table so these two will create the calculated table and some of the functions like day of which requires the date field as the input only if you provide the date field you will get the what day it is right so these are some of the column level functions like date it which requires the date as the column as the input that is what it is let's start understanding about uh, some of the functions so that it will be clear to you as you can already see in here this ship date or dim date ship date has been created using the calendar um, function you can see here calendar and once you create this calendar 
date of 2020 it will generate a two years data that's what it is and you can generate the year column on top of that you can also create the quarter column like which quarter it is right quarter of month of so you can keep adding those columns functions here let us try to create the quarter so here quarter of that date field right so date dim date ship date you can mention the full um, name ship date that date then you can close the bracket there you go you can see it belongs to the quarter one and when you move towards down six belongs to quarter two and seven belongs to quarter three that is what it is so that is what these functions are useful similarly you can create month of all those things let's start try to understand these two functions now and today what is now and today let's explain the key difference between now and today is now includes the time so you can see now okay when you close this one it doesn't require any um, what you call um, any um, inputs just now means you it includes the current timing as well for along with the date this is now and uh, what is today create the today will create the one create the one create the only the only the new the new date date column date column it will not date column it will not include it will not include the not include the time let us try to create to create a new column a new column for to for today or i can name it as current date current date so i will include that is the code that is the code difference so when you will use based on your business scenario when your business requires you to filter based on this timing right then you need to go for now but today you can see only it will give you the date zero 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 okay this is the code difference between now and today that is what you can able to so and um one key factor i want to highlight is like date difference people now confused with um, what do you call how you can write dash tax functions right so basically uh, let me move on to fact internet sales so what we can do is like uh, we will start creating the uh, difference between order date and uh, ship date okay using the date diff function and this date diff function takes the two parameter that is uh, two date columns as the input and gives the difference between those so that is the syntax so uh, what you can see from here is like um, you will start creating a column then you will understand what i'm trying to uh, say like why people are getting difficulty in writing tax as a column or as a measure why they confused we will start creating the column now so i will name it as um, shipment um, day okay so it is a basically days let's find and we will start writing it as date date of so it requires two date columns okay now when i start typing uh, the order date that that is a column it will start appearing here because the date div function takes the two columns so in calculated column you can refer a column by typing it okay it will start appearing it and you can use it and one more difference here you can see the shipment date contains only the date and here you can have the order date contains the time also okay so we will go for a day you try to maintain the data at the day level not at the time level so once you click on enter it will start creating the difference between order date and the ship date and um, as i already aware like uh, this column 
contains the uh, same difference okay the order date and ship date that's why for all the uh, rows you will get uh, seven days um, as the difference okay and even at the bottom and uh, for all the records let's try to check it out at the top uh, see uh, for all the records it is seven so the core idea what I'm trying to say is like the date diff function takes two columns when you create a calculated column you can directly refer those two columns easily okay that is the point I want to highlight but what happens when you are planning to create it as a measure that is uh, I want to calculate the um, date difference uh, then I can I create it as a measure or not okay what happens when you try to write it as a measure let's try to go and check it out let's go to the report view then I will start creating the measure here so now the measure okay I will name it as uh, date diff as a measure date diff measure now date diff when I start typing fact I'm trying I am not getting the column reference here at all because this is a uh, measure uh, definition is it will return a single value okay so uh, it it the calculation should be wrapped around within a function like aggregation function sum of or calculate okay those kind of functions it has to be uh, wrapped around when i uh, start with the sum of now you can see when i start typing uh, the um, uh, the sales now it will appear the order date or the column reference is appearing so this is what I want to highlight here like which function where you can use okay but you can use this function within a calculate function calculate sum of sales amount date diff of okay in that filter context I mean when you have a filter inside a calculate there you can use the date diff but here it is not possible that is the point I want to highlight the power of BI tools comes with um, very easy to write or write uh, some complex calculations easier so in that manner most of the business wants to analyze the data using time calculations like current month previous month current year previous year comparison for that we need to write complex logic in excel or any other conventional tools so the power of uh, power bi comes with this time intelligence functions you need to write a piece of code so that your current year previous year calculations are time related calculations will be more simple that is what we are going to see in this session so what are those functions you can see total MTD QTD YTD parallel period previous period you can see all these names are uh, self-explanatory and there are other uncommonly used functions next day next month next quarter most of the business uses MTD YTD QTD or previous period same period last year and in, in as and when cases you can use uh, some of the functions like first date last date it, it depends upon how people um, use the code right so and if you are not aware of all these functions I will give you some of the examples so that you will understand what we are doing as I said before we have a dedicated DAX playlist I have explained each and every function clearly with how and based on business scenarios so this will video will give you overview of it so if you want a deep knowledge just follow that DAX playlist now let's move on to our Power BI and check out some of the functions and so as I said before um, <clears throat> what is MTD first you need to understand what is MTD and um, uh, QTD and YTD for that uh, I'll let me drag and drop um, the uh, full data alternate key from the table and I use the uh, sales amount as the key factor of it so basically like uh, let me increase the uh, font size of it so that it will be easy for everyone to understand and view it this is column headers and I need the values also to be little bigger 
so that people can see it properly yes now it's better now you can see here from the uh, table where you have um, each day like from january we will consider from january 2011 the day each day sales is appearing here what about the cumulative sales right that is what mtd if it starts from january 1st and ends on um, january 31st that is mtd and if it continues till the quarter that is what qtd i mean to say january 1st till march 31st what is my total right that is quarter quarterly cumulative total and on next quarter it will change it to from this date it will be 10532 addition of this will give you the result here let me try to create some quick formula so that you will easy to understand it let's start writing mtd so new measure i will say sales amount mtd sales mtd i will say just uh, sales mtd no problem that so the formula is very simple total mtd and you start typing what you want the total mtd you type it as sales amount right so i want uh, sales amount so here i think you need to press you need to use sum of sales amount if you already defined the measure you can uh, use that one total sales otherwise the expression expression means the calculation it should return single value that is what expression is sum of sales amount i want as a mtd which date based on which date i need full date alternate key. so fact internet sales that is full date alternate key let me type full date alternate key okay now use this one and i need mtd only just press enter now we can use this measure here and you can see here from the total uh, let us not uh, have any um, the decimal places let's keep it as uh, none for this so let me categorize as none i don't want to be any decimal places let it not be a currency let it be a some decimal number that's okay now you can see um it is not summing up why because this is another important issue i want to highlight uh, let me quickly highlight it little later once you click on this right dim date dot alternate d you press dot here okay here you use the hierarchy okay you used hierarchy means you need to use the hierarchy from this dim date i will come to that uh, issue later why when you need to use the dot date when you should not use the dot date okay i'll come to that so now you can see from uh, this uh, diagram uh, table this is summed up with this uh, second date and you will get the 22161 that is 7000 plus 15000 which will give you the 22000 this 22000 summed up with um, 14000 the next day sales which will give you the 36000 so this is what the mtd is at the end of the month you can see what is your total sales so cumulatively you can see your data so when you view it in a graph you can see it properly you can see um as a cumulative uh, across the month right in each it is it should not be viewed as a month uh, let me filter out some of the year then we can see it properly so let me filter out uh, one of the year calendar year over here let me filter out as um list i'll filter 2013 let me increase uh, the size over here this is perfect and let me go down one down further now you can see from the diagram so it is mtd see january 1st the data is over here 
and you can see till january 30th it is keep on increasing right because each day sales is added to the previous day sales as soon as you reach the next month the february uh, let me increase the size it is very uh, small in size you can't able to see so as soon as you reach uh, the february uh, first you can see the date here um that quarter three quarter one february first okay the sales again start decreasing i mean to say it's not decreasing it will be like first of february sales and second this month mtd so that is what the mtd is all about and as you can see that is what happened over here so this is the example for mtd similarly you can do it for qtd and um, uh, other ytd functions so you can see here total mtd is this and same thing i can copy and paste and see what happens to qtd qtd means till that quarter here till the month end it is summed up and the next month it will be re again recalculated right what happened to qtd let's try to understand it new measure i will go for um, qtd so i will instead of mtd i will say qtd okay that's it so sales qtd i will use as part of uh, this um, visual so what happened in this uh, qtd so same thing happened here let us try to make it as a decimal number and <coughs> we will not have um, the decimal places let's make it as zero so qtd calculation is like um, you have accumulative uh, total till the month and then along with uh, that january mtd ends here whereas you see in qtd what happens along with this uh, mtd i mean the month value the february also added february sales it keep on adding because the february falls under that qtd that is the quarter to date so till when it will be added you can see till march 31st it is added again on qtd what happens the next quarter begins the value changes to the beginning of that quarter then it will keep on adding it so this is what the calculations um, usually we you, you need to see the trend how it's growing or not even in the covid cases you can see flatten the curve meaning if your sales is keep growing it is good if in case of covid the curve should be flattened the each day cases new cases should be reduced or less so that the curve is flattened in our case in the graph what we have seen in these new sales it was increasing in the case of sales a business the growth should be more right in case of covid it should be less the curve should be flattened so that is what people say about flatten the curve now forget about all these things the mtd qtd you understand about it similar functions you can start writing like uh, current period previous period parallel period the one important aspect i want to highlight is like about dot date why i have used um, dot date in this um, uh, chapter right i mean in this calculations now you can see here from this um, uh, as soon as um, you import the tables you can see whichever date column you have i'm showing it in the dim customer it creates a date column one hierarchy so what is this hierarchy means for each date column identify in your entire model any table right for each date column it will create one internal table that date table that date table is referred here in your calculations either you can refer that date table or that particular direct column what i'm trying to say if you see here in this dim date a full date alternate key is your date column 
and which is having a hierarchy also okay either you can refer it uh, directly as full date alternate key date okay as a date column otherwise if you refer hierarchy then you need to refer dot date what i'm trying to say now go back our calculations like sales mtd here you can see dim date dot full date alternate key dot date okay I have used the hierarchy because dot after dot when you press it will display a lot of uh, columns here as you can see dot you can see dot date day month month quarter number quarter this is like you are referring a table of that column okay internal table of that column then you refer and keep that as a dot date okay now that's why when you use here here you use the hierarchy okay here you use the hierarchy that is why you got the answer i mean to say here you use the hierarchy that's why you uh, got the the mtd value what happens if you are not using this hierarchy let's try to see here i will remove this hierarchy instead of this i will keep this alternate key now as soon as i choose that uh, table okay here in the table i mean in the table visual i'm using the column directly i'm not using the hierarchy here you can see i'm using that column hierarchy i mean column directly okay this is full date alternate key i'm using that column directly here what happened the mtd qtd values becomes null because in the formula i have used dot date i referred the hierarchy it is some other table it got confused so in art if you use so how you are going to use your visuals okay based on that you need to code it properly if you have had enabled that option i will quickly show it to you uh, why uh, for all the date columns you are getting the internal table okay now so how you are going to use whether you are going to use the date field as such like this or hierarchy based on that you write the column here i mean calculations here so now uh, in the same formula when i remove dot date for mtd alone let's see whether mtd start working or not when i press enter now i am referring the column directly there you go now you see the mtd works fine but qtd doesn't work because it's still referring to that hierarchy table internal table so this is the problem okay now whether we should have that internal table or not for all the columns this is performantly inefficient design okay that is if you are having a date column in all the most most of the tables like start date end date it is recommended that you should not enable the hierarchy by default how can you avoid it so go to file and options and settings click on options then go to data load here you have auto date time so what it is if you see here automatically creates a hidden date table for each field in the model okay that has date or date time data type so whichever column has date or date time data type it will create hidden table if you have a 10 columns in different tables 10 internal tables will be created so that will be performantly killing so just uncheck it then press okay this will definitely improve your performance so once you click on it you see this is collapsing because you see the qtd as refer that internal table which is no more exist because you can see that full alternate date key doesn't have in customer we have seen a birth date it it is also went so internal tables everything is gone it will be acting as a normal column so your calculations should be fixed so it is better all these things you do before creating your measures so uncheck that option so that all your table does not create your 
internal tables for each state table that is the first step then you create your calculations without dot date okay there won't be any any more internal tables so you can directly refer the date column this is the most of the questions people ask me so now you can see both calculations are fixed so this is the one of the important thing i want to highlight as part of this video i hope uh, you are clear with all these things lot of uh, other function each and every functions i have explained in the dax playlist just go and refer it so this is more powerful uh, uh, functions which will save lot of your time in this session we will look into a uh, filter functions which are most powerful function syntax what are the different functions available in uh, filter functions category all those things listed over here and whatever highlighted in red that is all all except calculate filter keep filters look up value selected value are most commonly used filter functions and other things are used as and when required let's try to understand the filter function when we need to use it and based on some examples you will get it better let's jump into power bi now i have a simple example here like for ca each calendar year i have a sales so it is not ordered based on um, calendar year that's okay fine you can see here in 2010 2014 you have a sales now you want to compare this total sales are how much sales happened in united states and what is the percentage in other words the requirement is like make it simple what is the percentage contribution of united states against the total <coughs> that is what you want to get in order to get that percentage you need to calculate the us totals against each year it is not against each year once you write a formula you can use any filters either it can be by calendar it can be by uh, customer group or product anything that will works fine that is the power of tax now <clears throat> first we will try to write how to get the us sales right so people think like uh, those who are not aware of tax they will use uh, sales territory as a country here and they can filter it right united states but then how you will get this value total sales against uh, this one right each sales that is not possible because this is united states but they want to compare what is the total value of united states here and you need to divide united sales sales with total sales that is what we want once you filter it the entire visual filters for 14833 you do not have option to get total sales okay that is a problem you will get so there are different ways to achieve it the one of the best way is to remove this one no need to worry about it using a calculate and filter combination of your dax function let us try to write it down so i already uh, made um, the function here the us sales let us start writing it again so that people will understand so sum of sales amount so which is uh, available in the my uh, fact table this is what i want to calculate okay that will be wrapped up in the calculate function now as you can see from the syntax you the expression will return the scalar value and here you will uh, have the filter 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 as the filter as soon as you type filter the filter function the syntax over here it takes the table returns the table that has been filtered okay so you are um, uh, applying this calculation okay that is sum of sales for the filtered table okay filtered for what united states in our case so where is that united states available that is available in the dim sales territory you put comma and then enter then you can call that sales territory country i mean refer that column and you can press united states 
so this is simple formula and pretty much uh, clear uh, about the definition what all functions we used we use calculate that is to calculate some value based on the filter applied so when you want to apply some filters then you need to wrap it in the calculate function so this is the filter function which will filter the table that is united states now when i use this uh, formula here okay now you can see this is the united states value for 2010 and this is the value for 2011 now i can compare the and get the percentage contribution of united states against the total and i can analyze these two measures against any of the dimension okay by product how much us has contributed against the total by uh, different uh, regions right now against uh, i mean it's not against region i'm saying by different products or different current uh, customer uh, geography okay by uh, different dimensions i can use this same formula and i can compare the how much us has contributed against different dimension that is the core concept behind this dax formulas you once you write it it is applicable for all possible combination of filters that's fine now uh, coming back to our question so how, how to calculate this percentage it is us sales divided by total sales which is written using here us sales percentage i used a divide function either you can use uh, instead of divide if you use uh, uh, us sales divided by actual uh, fact internet sales total sales this is also a way of writing it but the problem i will highlight so now you see if you have anything with uh, zero in the uh, denominator it will show the div divide by zero error when you use a slash as a divider instead you need to go for divide function which will handle the divide by zero errors so that is the core concept behind it and you can put the comma so numerator and denominator it will ask so you can see this uh, once you put divide the result is same you can see that is 1.4 uh, million from the 5.8 million is absolutely 24 percentage around 24.6 percentage that is what it is showing so this is how you use the filter function in order to get some proportions from the total or you want to show only that us sales somewhere over in your calculations so this is what we will use it here let me get rid of this and let me go back to another example now now this is fine but another requirement the second requirement is like i want to analyze this right i want to analyze this um, sales to, instead of total sales whatever i filter in the dim territory country itself i mean like what i'm trying to say here let me drag and drop uh, country here if i choose country australia against australia uh, how much us has contributed bit difference between these two right total sales and what is the sole sales of uh, united states how i can want to compare these two results how i can do that right that is what the next requirement now what happens now if you noticed when i choose a country australia you see the us sales is empty even you choose canada the us sales is empty when i choose united states the data appears in the total sales and us sales when you understand this particular concept then most of the calculations you can able to handle when it comes to filter function what happening now let us try to understand it now you see here uh, the calculate function calculates the sum of sales the filter filter as i said it will filter the table with this particular country applied so what happens when i choose australia first of all this filter context is applied so this table is filtered for australia then it is trying to filter it for united states so you do not have any record single record 
where the transaction of that particular uh, i mean to say a single transaction it will be tagged to either australia or united states you cannot have both right you are saying that record is australia and united states it is not going to happen right so when you choose canada it is the same case france it is the same case meaning like this filter is applied this dim sales territory is filtered for germany then this filter is internally applied to this fact table so in the fact table you are already filtering the records only for germany after that you are applying the united states filter so there is no transaction that can happen in germany that will also happen in united states right because each transaction tagged to one sales territory only so how to handle such a scenario you need to what is happening here the filter context is apply to this table that is the problem so whatever filters applied to this table do not apply it the all function will override that filter context so you when you put filter of all of dim cell series cells any filters applied in this table don't consider it either from here or in this table all are filter context do not consider any filters ignore all the filters then consider only united states once i put all here okay then i press enter now still it shows united states because there is no filters applied here when i choose australia you can see the data appears here why because the australia filter is not applied because the filter what are applied don't consider any filters outside consider only the this filter so only united states is filter meaning like all the records in this table is uh, considered and then united states it's apply that is why we put all so in using this you can able to compare how much contribution or what is the difference between the australia sales and the us sales so this is how you need to understand this filters so when we move back over here you have seen all calculate filters all these things are more or less same if you understand this concept behind it and i have taken in deep about uh, other functions all except keep filters look up value selected value all other things just go and watch my dax playlist because of time constraints i'm not taking all the other functions in this video let's move on to our next topic it is time for us to check some of the logical functions the list of functions are uh, available here as you can see which are highlighted in red are most commonly used like and or not if switch and true as well as false and else functions also used very often with some examples let us try to understand when to use these logical functions if you can see in our previous example in filter um, logical fu filter functions we have used uh, us sales right so now the business wants the yearly sales or whatever sales happen against any dimension they were measuring when they measure it if it is greater than 10k right then it should be good year for them that is good and if it is less than uh, um 10k that is for example okay then it is a bad year <clears throat> so how we can define that right so you have defined the sales then on top of this you need to write one measure so <coughs> excuse me so basically what you need to do here is like you need to start writing new measure and you can see like i can say good sales are bad good or bad maybe we can say like good or bad year based on that we can say okay then this is the name of the measure then 
what is the criteria if the total sales are it is the based on the us sales okay if us sales is greater than 10000 we cannot have anything with 10000 let me make it as uh, 20000 that is for example i told if the us sales is greater than 20k then ma make it as good otherwise it is bad right so this is what we want to achieve it so this is the if condition which checks the logical condition that is why it named as logic so if the sales is greater than this then display it as good or bad now you can start using this um, measure i will make it properly good or bad here <coughs> and if you use this measure against here okay what happens you can see as per the condition it is less than 20,000 then it considered as bad and it is everything is greater than 20k then it becomes <coughs> your good year so this is how you can write your conditions this is why you it is called as logical condition based on each row it is testing and give you the result now <coughs> when to use the and or are conditions right let me introduce another measure here that is Canada sales. It is same like uh, your US sales and I will introduce it. And in this case, what happens is like, let us try to fix this or um, change the logic here. If the US sales is uh, greater than or I mean say, if US sales and Canada sales is greater than 10K, then only you need to consider it as good year meaning both us and canada should be greater than 10k then it is good otherwise it is bad so in that case how we can write is like uh, so let us try to change the condition us sales is greater than 20000 and how to write another condition right so you can press and here i mean to say type start typing and it is the different way to do it so it will test the first logical condition then comma that is canada sales right i have used that um, measure here this is canada sales this also should be greater than 10k okay something like that it is greater than 10k and canada sales greater than 10k then it is considered as good otherwise it is bad let's try to press enter what happened now the result is same because of this condition let us try to slightly alter this instead of canada sales to 10k if it is greater than 2k that is fine then it's considered as good then what happens now you can see everything turned to be good and this also turned to be uh, good we will not focus on these totals we need to ignore these totals when using these conditions okay that is fine i mean even if it is applicable uh, at the total level then this is the condition is true now what is happening for us sales is is true and the canada sales is greater than 2000 it's true both conditions satisfied then the true condition is evaluated otherwise the false condition let me <coughs> write a condition instead of this either one of them satisfied now both are satisfied then only it turned to be true let us again move back this one to 20k right and it becomes bad now because the canada sales is not greater than 20k and now either one of them is true like either canada i mean us sales is greater than 10000 otherwise Canada sales is greater than 20,000 then it becomes good in that case it becomes all this is like typical you were uh, schooling um, uh, concept like and or condition either one condition satisfied then it becomes true 
if both conditions satisfy then it becomes true means you need to use and either one of them satisfies true then you say it as good i mean true condition then you need to use r so let me put r here now what happened that is this condition satisfied now so it becomes a good here this is what it is now let me uh, summarize it so if is logical condition used to test and and or r is used when you have a multiple conditions to test and if both should be satisfied then you need to as and either one of them should be satisfied then you can use the r condition now let me revert back uh, the initial uh, one like and condition either one of them should satisfied what happened now is like now us condition is satisfied but this canada sales is not greater than 20k for year 2010 and 2014 that's why it is bad now now if it is the case of this output i want to reverse this i am meaning like whatever it is returning now this condition is not satisfied for this particular row then it becomes false whereas in 2011 both conditions satisfied us sales is greater than 10k and canada sales is greater than 20k then it becomes good but i don't want such output i want to reverse the output i will use the not meaning like if it returns true make it as false so when you put the reverse you just keep watching it all the bad becomes good good becomes bad i entered it so now you see the first two conditions become good i mean rows becomes good and these three which satisfied this condition becomes bad because this condition unconditioned return true supposed to be good but because of not it the true is reversed and the if condition returns false so false class is executed so this is the core concept behind it you can play around with if and or not all these things if this is fundamentals it's very basic let us not focus much on that so this is why you use the logical condition let's move this one aside and let's bring another uh, example the interesting factor about switch uh, the switch statement is used to check multiple condition so now you see if condition you check one or two conditions is fine but sometimes if you want to use uh, multiple uh, conditions like um the switch can be used in creating columns for if say for example let us take um, dim date if the month number okay where is the month number where is the month year month number year okay here it is month number of year 7 8 6 7 like that it's keep on going if it is 7 then generate it as july something like that you want to generate assume that english month name is not there so you can start writing it over here using a switch statement let us try to uh, uh, write some quick column here this is like um new month name okay in order to write multiple cases switch off you can say month you can refer that uh, column number here i mean column name month number of year comma okay if it is 1 then what you need to do it is jan if it is 2 then it is feb so like that you can keep on writing until um, till right so for time being i'm not writing that by default uh, if it is false then make it as zero like that so you can have a multiple columns here i mean conditions here <coughs> expression that yield variant data type cannot be okay here you see i have made january february as the value but at the else case i have put zero it is not the 
two things so the default uh, month should be if uh, i'm not specifying anything it should be any something like that okay not available something so when you press enter now you can see because of these months are uh, seven i didn't put let us try to introduce for seven i will make uh, seven i will say um june it is june june july may june july okay it's july let me put seven for it you can see it is satisfied the seven for seventh month july is satisfied for other months i didn't specify the value for eighth month so there is no value here so like this you want to have multiple conditions you can use it this switch statement i want to give you another interesting example of uh, switch statement where <coughs> um we will remove this or uh, we will keep this table here for time being so it will not disturb our current focus remove this where i have interesting case here you can see based on the the requirement is like now this particular card data card can able to show only one measure right uh, you can see either the sales amount i will try to have the sales amount here and i can have the quantity over here sales quantity where is the sales quantity i don't have um, any measure for it let me um, drag and drop directly here or i can create one measure very quickly new measure it can be anything okay i'm just uh, saying for your example any measures you can able to show so basically what i'm trying to convey here is like dynamic measure selection that is what i'm going to use using this switch statement the another example i'm going to give so this is sum of quantity the name already exist no that is fine so it is order quantity now i'm using this order quantity so this actually what i'm trying to convey is like this is defaulted one measure is placed here this is another measure placed here now based on uh, selection okay user has to see the different measures here right different measure value how to achieve it so this can be achieved using the switch statement right so for that to happen you we need some metadata table before creating such measures this is the prerequisite so as you can see here uh, this is use created using dax again so what i need is like you can see measure id 1 and 2 sales amount and quantity what i'm trying to achieve it here so i will have this uh, measure list name in my filter <coughs> this is my filter i can have it here okay i can i think you can able to see it let me increase the size if it's not able to visible properly so this is what it is so when i choose quantity in this uh, data card i want to show the quantity if i choose sales amount i want to show the sales amount this too i have referred for your reference so how to write a measure for it so <coughs> basically um we need to use the switch statement for that let us go to new measure and um let's say sales amount or quantity okay uh sorry for the spelling it's okay now <coughs> i will start writing switch and the expression is like i need to get one single value from the filter it has been chosen right so i can use the uh, value called selected uh, value okay selected value there are all other lo lot of other measures that you can go and refer but in this example i'm going for selected value selected value of sales um not sales measure list dot measure name so when 
what happens here is like the selected value function whatever you have chosen in this column that will be pointed here I mean that will be act as a filter and what are the values it will have right either it can be sales amount that is the value it has been chosen once it is chosen what values to be displayed I want to display the sales amount measure that is total sales so you can use the total sales measure here next I will use the let me put enter then you will start writing quantity okay once you start entering it we have just created uh, another measure here that is quantity measure so what we are instructing over here is like if whatever value is selected here in this particular table measure name if it is the sales amount okay whatever the, these are the list of values present in this table if it is sales amount you show me total sales measure if the chosen value is quantity you show me quantity measure that is what we are instructing if nothing is chosen make it as zero that is the default value let's try to see how it behaves so I will unselect this and I will use the sales amount or quantity measure this is the measure we have created we can drag and drop here now you see there is nothing is selected and which is defaulted as the zero value okay now when as soon as I choose sales amount you can see this values appear this value as you remember which is using the total sales right so this is value appearing when I choose quantity you see this quantity value is appearing so when I choose nothing it will be nothing so this is how you can dynamically work on different list right I mean you can this measure can be used across any charts as well right so it can be used against um, uh, the charts over here um, what do you call <coughs> I can use sales amount against any of the uh, product you can see from model name whether model name exists yes it uh, or I can go for a color by default or I can go by class <coughs> this can be used now when I choose quantity you can see the quantity value against the each class when I choose sales amount this will be showing me the sales amount each class against each class so it can be analyzed across any dimensions you have it not only class it can be against the customer or the date or the country anything that you wish to that is what it is so once you write a calculation it will be more into dynamic value I hope you understand uh, when to use this uh, logical statements with some of the examples that we have, we have seen today. Let's move on to another list of functions. In this session we will discuss about relationship functions in DAX. What are those functions? You can see it here cross filter, related, related table and use relationship. Let's check it out what are those functions when it will be useful we will check it out with some examples I'm in Power BI now now we have seen a lot of functions which is um, having logical or filter time intelligence functions mostly it is based on a single table now I have a scenario what I want to know from here is like I have this um, region that is uh, territory in each region I want to know how many products has been sold right I mean instead of products in each region what are the distinct colors has been sold that is what I want to understand now what I'm trying to say the relationship between the sales territory and fact that is only relationship between these two and you see here from the product the filter applies from towards the fact table and even sales territory applies here 
but I want to do comparison between sales territory and dim product okay without intervention of this fact so how you can do that right this is what uh, we want to understand it basically like whatever calculations we have seen till now all are based on the fact table you are calculating something what is my sales amount what is my quantity everything is based on the fact table so any dimension you filter if you filter apply filter here then the filters are I mean it will be the fact table will be filtered and if you apply any filters here that will also be applied so the filters apply towards your fact table but now the case is like I want to see how for each country how many distinct product with different colors right say for example in uh, uh, United States there are five colors the products uh, with f total distinct colors sold is five colors like that I want to understand okay this is the case now how we can achieve it let's try to get this list by I have this region that is um, each region over here and let me go here and get the product list that is a count of distinct color instead of that I will go, go to that later and I will drag and drop the color here and I will put distinct count okay count distinct what happened here is like there are 10 distinct colors which is repeated for all possible combination why because you used one column from here and distinct color there is no relationship between these two right if you see the filters propagate from this dimension to fact and here this is applying from dim product to here only filters applied towards fact table there is no filters applied once you apply here it will not reflect dim product that is the issue then how we can achieve it now what the solution is like you need to enable this as the two-way relationship let me do that so any filters applied here will propagate from fact table to your product so let me do the cross filter cross filter direction both okay now once I apply this what happened over here now you can see this filter is propagated once you apply a filter each country filter applied towards a fact table and this filter applied towards the product also so that is why you get the distinct product in each country a distinct color products has been products with different uh, I mean total eight distinct colors has been sold so this is what it is right but as were conventionally we are talking you like in theoretical that should not be bi-directional it is the performance deficient so what do you need to do it in that case we need to use it using a DAX that is where your cross filter function comes into picture you see the formula for this like I want to calculate the distinct count of colors and I use the cross filter okay cross filter what it will do it will enable that relationship only for this calculation so you see the formula here cross filter I will say left hand side column and right hand side column you see the definition cross filter you use uh, uh, the fact table product okay product key you see the definition here left column right column and cross filter type whether it should be uh, both left right there are a lot of uh, options for now for simplicity I'm not going dig deep uh, digging deep into it I made a separate video regarding this uh, cross filter you can check it out in the DAX playlist now using this I have enabling cross filter what from what direction you need to enable I will say both okay once I do that gen press uh, okay then click on enter okay so this is the formula now again we have removed this uh, direction that's why the count says 10 now I use this measure here 
now you can see the result whatever we achieved when we got it using enable the both direction we enable both and we received this result in the count of uh, distinct colors but now using this measure that newly written measure we achieved the similar result this is the concept behind cross filter you can do the different direction you can see the options available here left none both one way one way left filter one way right filter like that you can enable this is the main purpose of the cross filter so you virtually enable for this calculation because this is used only for certain calculations then you can make use of that function let's move on to another function called related when we can use it let's get rid of this and um, you will say so related function so when it is used like let me have another case now for related function where i want to understand i need a data in this sales uh, table whichever sales happened after 2014-0101 i have a data on till 2014 only so i'm having that case so i need a data from 2014-0101 greater than or equal to and in the uh, country called canada okay that is what i need now how i can get that using uh, i need it in a cart so one way of doing is drag and drop and filter different dimensions but if you want that same calculation used in different um, places it's better to write a dax that is what i am teaching you from the beginning so let us try to write a dax for it and we will see what issues we'll get so what is my concern sales 2014 okay and then uh, i need canada so i will name it like this so calculate again sum of um, sales amount start writing it sum of sales amount close braces alt enter then comma here i use the filter fact internet sales comma that is i have order date key so i can use make use of that order date key greater than equal to 2014 0101 okay just for understanding now what is my second condition this is fine what is my second condition when i use uh, the country right the dim sales territory when i start typing dim sales territory it will not appear here why because when you use a table here will filter of single table it will always expect any column reference within this table only you can able to refer so you see i were typing country here it will not display any of the country this is displaying all country sales is a measure so in order to get a reference to another column that is a related table column for this table you need to use the related that is the concept behind it so related when you put related then all the columns or all the tables related to this fact table will be displayed you can refer any one of the column using this related function i am referring now the country column from the dim sales territory so related country equals canada so this is how you can refer the column basically related is used to refer the related column a related uh, table column of the table okay that is where you will use it so you can use in any one of the reference wherever you use in a filter or any table context right i mean when you refer a table you want another column of a related table then you can use related once you press enter i will say canada so 2014 canada sales when you click on it you can see 2014 canada sales so you might have wonder whether this is correct or not right so for that let us take um, this okay and um, go back over here and um, we will see 
Canada sales for 2014. For Canada sales, you can see 2014. I've uh, pressed Canada here. This is the reference total sales 9458, which is what we are having it here 2014 Canada sales. By this way, you can ensure this is correct. So you can keep it as none so that <coughs> the data is tallied 2458. 2458. That is what we are showing here. So I hope uh, you understand concept behind the related when you want to refer another table in your calculation the related table then you can use the related. Finally we will touch upon uh, use relationship and then we can move on to another function type. So use relationship is used when you have a role playing dimension. What do you mean by role playing dimension? You have here the you might have understand about the uh, concept of having active relationship right you see here this is having a thin thick line i mean thin line uh, that is without dotted which is having make this relationship as active so at a time as a two tables can have uh, only one active relationship okay so this relationship is active but what happens this is because the fact order date key is related to dim date dimension but in the same fact table you have a due date and ship date one of the solution is like you have a dedicated date dimension for ship date and the due date that will be too much clumsy so in order to avoid it right we will create a inactive relationship you see here using the due date we have created the full date alternate key even with the ship date you can create the inactive relationship you can have any number of inactive relationship so for simplicity i have used only the due date inactive relationship so this kind of dimension is called role playing dimension a single dimension acting as multiple roles one as uh, order date another for the due date so what is the actual thing you want to understand here is like if you check out the um, fact table you can see uh, order date which has happened on 1st of uh, 28 January 28 but delivery happened on February 9th so when you analyze this by order date this record will be shown on January but when you want to analyze by due date this record will be shown in February so the count will vary based on how you are viewing your data so instead of having multiple dates you can use it by meshes right that's what we are going to see now so let us try to create total sales by order date total sales uh, by due date by default total sales by order date is this i mean total sales this is using the order date we can create the total sales by due date then we can see the difference so what we need to do is like new measure we can create the total sales by due date okay then what you can use you can do again the calculate so calculate as i said that is the magic function you will use all through your dax calculations nothing else if you learn it properly then you can make use of it sum of sales amount then now you can see like use relationship what relationship you need to activate so the fact internet sales due date key that is related to dim date full date alternate key so that is what you need to enable it so virtually you are enabling in this calculations so what you need to use is like you need to use this due date calculations in your tables instead of your you can see from the diagram so let's clear up uh, some of the columns now why it's not appearing i hope uh, there is some issue in the uh, relationship because you should not get uh, immediate uh, response i mean you can see the due date key and here it is the date itself different 
so it is actual date and you are relating it i hope we need to click on this so then you go and uh, choose here what happened here use relationship can use only two columns reference participating in relation okay that's fine so because now it is not the full date alternate key it is dim date dot date key so it should be whatever relationship you have used the inactive relationship those columns only you need to use in the use relationship combination otherwise it won't work that is what it is shown now once you click on enter now you can see the difference here basically like what happened because in the total sales in 2010 whatever happened there is nothing was delivered on that 2010 everything delivered on 2011 that is why you have like this right the total sales is appearing for this so this is the concept behind um, the use relationship instead of uh, showing you the this is for uh, uh, order date and this is for uh, due date you cannot have a different filters you can use the same date one for order date this by default it will be order date and if you want to create a due date wise your measure you can calculate it that is what it is happen you can have a look at my DAX playlist about this use relationship function if you want to have more information we will uh, move on to another DAX types function like text functions now it's time for us to discuss about text functions what are those functions you can see it from this list and as usual like uh, there are a lot of functions and most of them we might not use uh, frequently and i would say like all these functions used to uh, concatenate or try to find some such string in your queries or um, you want to convert that into some other way right you can see the lower upper and you get the first two characters use left of two last two characters right of two all these things i would like to recommend you to use in the power query or push it towards your source system itself right that is my recommendation because of uh, uh, the load you going to apply it here will be complex once you derived a column then you can use it mostly what i'm trying to say is like text functions used to derive a column we most probably use it and in some cases in some of the calculations using a filter function when you refer a table you will also use these functions let's try to check it out uh, in this session what are uh, these functions is all about when you need to use it with some examples as i said before we're going to create some new calculated columns using this so i'm in this dim customer table and one such example is like you have first name last name you need to combine it to get the full name so let's try to create it let's try to create a new column and we can name it as um, full name let's make it full name let me make it little bigger so that you can able to see it and different ways to combine you can use the ambassador symbol but we are going to use the concatenate function concatenate so concatenate you can see you have a text one and text two you used to join two text strings only two you cannot concatenate multiple values unlike in the excel formulas i hope there will be 255 text columns you can combine it in a single command but here you can combine only two text strings for that first name first name from the dim customer first name comma okay and the last name last name there you go <coughs> so this is what uh, concatenate uh, does you can see here from the output you combine uh, both the values over here and uh, let's uh, take another example like i want uh, first four characters one bracket one one right within this i need to get it from this phone number for that you will use um, 
like um, left off so let's try to do that new column again so this is also used in the querying as well right while you are querying uh, you in your tables you want to filter uh, whichever starts with uh, one space bracket one one space i mean close bracket then you can use uh, this phone column left off uh, phone column then use this string as a search string so like that you can use it for a filtration as well I mean to say now I'm trying to create a column with the left of four but in your querying in your calculations you want to filter using such a things you can also use that lift function now what I'm trying to achieve like left I will name it as um, phone country okay uh, that is country code usually at the prefix I thought uh, the first four characters or first uh, seven characters will be the my country code so dim customer phone so how many characters one space is two three four five six six characters I need comma six so when I put like this immediately I will get those six characters over here you can see from the result one two three four five six so this is my left of six in order to get a right you can use the right over here so this will give me last six characters at the as my new column so you can see from the examples so this is how you can able to play around with this um, text um, functions you can also use all these functions over here as I said before instead of doing it here you move these calculations at your source system or at the power query level I hope uh, this is clear um, I we have seen a lot of functions and there is nothing much we can talk in this um, text functions let's try to move on to our next session so we have reached the end of the session so let's do a summary or conclusion DAX is a functional language and DAX is used to create a measure calculated column or a table calculate does all the magic because whatever you do in your calculations you use the calculate function that will return the results all X functions which are iterator functions that executes row by row you need to use appropriate functions based on the business scenario if you want to use the time intelligence you can go for ytd mtd related functions if you want to uh, relate to two tables you need to use either related or use relationship based on your design so that is what i mentioned appropriate functions based on the business scenario and you should also know the limitations of the function for example path function not supported in a direct query so you should also aware of a modeling part what kind of model you are designing uh, like either it's import mode or direct query mode and based on that you might use appropriate functions as well so we can conclude like DAX is simple but not easy and learning curve is too long you will become a proficient in DAX but it takes time so keep learning that is the only advice I can uh, give it for you to have a good knowledge in DAX if you like this video hit the subscribe button and comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset